Hello and welcome to the Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Uh, joining you from, actually, there's a song from the 70s, says it never rains in Southern California. Well, here in San Diego, it's raining today. And I know I get no sympathy from anybody else in the world, but anyway, just thought I'd throw that in. And today I'm joined by... Eric Kapitulik, who is in New England. How are you doing, Eric? I'm great, John. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, and uh, and Eric uh, is is um, he was in the United States uh, Marine Corps Infantry Officer Special Operations. Uh, he did a lot of uh, uh, special ops uh, missions and many other things. And uh, and then you once leaving uh, leaving active service, you went to Chicago University, got an MBA, and then you started. Uh, you founded the program, right? Uh, That's right, John. You, and now you've launched launched a book, the program, and this is. And I'm just going to flash it up on screen for people just to see the cover. Just if you give me a second here. Okay, so you can see the program, Lessons from Elite Military Units for Creating and Sustaining High-Performance Leaders and Teams. Okay, so uh, so Eric, tell me a little bit about uh, your decision to start the program in the first place and then the book that came from it. Yeah, sure. I, I As you said, I was a... I'm a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. I, I served eight years as a United States Marine Corps officer. And, and other than husband and daddy, a Marine is certainly the title I'm most proud of. Right. Uh, but after eight years on active duty, I decided to leave active duty. I attended Chicago Business School, University of Chicago Graduate School of Business. And then I founded the program my company. That was a dozen years ago. We have one mission to develop better leaders and create more cohesive teams. That's what we do, develop better leaders and create more cohesive teams. 12 years ago, uh, I worked with three collegiate men's lacrosse teams, teams, uh, coaches that I played for or against with. Now in our 12th year in business, we work with over 160 collegiate and professional athletic teams and major corporations annually throughout North America. Wow. During, so, during that process, I'm sorry to answer your question, yeah. during that dozen years, my teammates and I at the program, based on our own personal experiences and those experiences of, uh, as I said, having the privilege of working with 160 teams annually, during that time uh, and during those experiences, we felt compelled, my co-author and I, we felt compelled to put those experiences of how to achieve our absolute best as an individual and as a team into a book. And that book was the program. Yeah. So the, the first section is uh, creating a championship culture, right? And and this is something, there's a lot of people talk about creating culture and all of that. And and yet a lot of organizations and uh, and teams allow culture to develop organically. And you know, that's sometimes, sometimes that works, a lot of the times it doesn't. What are some of the things that you talk about that goes into creating a deliberate and a championship culture? Yeah, well, first and foremost, and John, you hit the nail right on the head, is that sometimes it does develop organically. The, the thing, one of the key points of our book, though, is the most successful individuals and the most successful teams stay laser focused on that which they can control. Mm -hmm. we, we control, we concern ourselves with so much in life. Oh, yeah. We control very little of it. <laughs> our culture, though, how we define it, we do control that. And yet most organizations don't. Now, can you get lucky still? Yes, of course you can get lucky. But why depend on it? Instead, mm -hmm. be very, in your words, very deliberate about it. And how do we suggest and how do we teach being deliberate about it? First and foremost, as the leaders of those organizations or the leader of a team, determine and define what your core values are. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be everything to everyone. Three or four. Three, we suggest. But what are the three core values that are non-negotiables for you? And I think that's a, that's a really great point because 
I think if you asked a lot of people that question, what are the three, you know, non-negotiable core principles that you have? I mean, so I think many people would struggle with that, um, not because they don't have them. It's just because they've never actually sat down and defined them, right? Uh, we all, personality, personality tends to change through, we're all of some of our experiences. Sure that those experiences have a, in the people, not only experiences, but the experience of the relationships that we have throughout our lives uh, helps to shape our personality. Personality is different than values though. Mm -hmm. Our values as people in the know um, have done, you know, <laughs> years of research on that, who we are as individuals, what our values are, are generally set by nine years of age and yeah. definitely set by 12. So, but most of us, we just don't think about what they really are. Yeah. What we suggest, and what, again, what we teach as leaders is that it's imperative to do so. It's the single most imperative thing that we can do as individuals and as, and as a team, not only for the success of the teams of which we're fortunate enough to be a part, but just as an individual, it'll make us more successful. Mm -hmm. And I think those are, and I think this is even more critical because I mean, I, I, I talk to a lot of people about the, yeah, the, unfortunately, the pervasive culture that we live in today, where it's a lot of you know shortcuts and and you know finding the easiest way to do things, and and it's all about, and sometimes it's all about, oh, uh, you, know, you got to make everybody happy and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, because of that, that things things like core principles don't get focused on enough. Because if, as I mean, as you know from your from your career, you know, having solid core principles, it's not always easy, and it's not always that's not always the most popular thing either, is it? It's it's very challenging. And <laughs> John, you, you sounds like you you. Uh... You either just read our book or, or at the very least, we should have had you write it. Um, <laughs> having core values and sticking by them. It, in theory, it's not difficult at all. Mm -hmm. Determine what your core values are and just stand by them. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not difficult it, in, in theory. In practice, mm -hmm. it requires great discipline great yeah. discipline and to your point of trying to make everybody happy i give the example that at the program and by the way in in team capitulic in in our family we're selfless tough and disciplined mm -hmm. that's who we are selfless means that you put the team first tough means we do what's right not what's easy disciplined right. means you do what you say you are going to do that right there if you're selfless, tough, and disciplined, it, and this has nothing to do with race, sex, sure. creed, uh, core values are core values. It has nothing to do with sexual orientation. No, none of that. If you're selfless, tough, and disciplined, the program, and quite frankly, Eric Capitula, you're going to love. You're going to love. <laughs> and, if you aren't, and if you aren't those things, you will get fired from the program very quickly. And you're going to hate us. And quite frankly, you're not going to like me very much. It, <laughs> so th th that's what it is. Now, that doesn't mean I can't be nice to everybody, but I'm saying on our team, we're going to be selfless, tough and disciplined. That's who we yeah. are. And I think that's the and I think that's a great it's a, it's, it's a great foundation because sometimes people think that then when you put a team together, you know, you're putting a team of very different personalities and individuals and all of this and different but there's got to be something cohesive there right there's got to be something shared to be a, a successful team john i cannot overstate the value in the in our terminology combat multiplier combat multiplier that diversity affords us on any team it's it's a diversity is a combat multiplier diversity in sex race mm -hmm. uh, sexual orientation uh grew up in the country in the city socioeconomic class have huge diversity in all of those things it, it, it is a combat multiplier not in core values right right and I think that's a really important point so if you're going to assemble a team then you have to have some uniformity around core values right john we don't you don't get hired from the you don't get hired at the program 
or fired from the program mm -hmm. for being male or female, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, uh, uh, LGBT, uh, uh, straight, you know, homosexual. You, no, you get hired and fired from the program for being selfless, tough, and disciplined or not being that. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then, so talk about, so I think uh, selfless is something that, um, unfortunately, it's, it's, uh, it's not something that people talk about enough today. And, I'm, and I guarantee you there are people who probably don't really understand what selfless really means. So can you, can you give a definition of it for people, like practical definition of what being selfless really means? We define selflessness at the program. And by the way, how we define what our core values are, and we discuss this in the book, Make sure first step is determining what those core values are. The next step is defining them for your team mm -hmm. because we're all a sum of our experiences. So based on my experiences and my team's experiences, we have a certain mental picture of what a selfless person does or what a tough person does, what a disciplined person does. Mm -hmm. Based on your own and your team's own experiences, you're going to have a, your own mental picture of what one does. We can have the same core values, but we can define them differently. Right. Perfectly okay. Because your definition, just like my definition, is based on our experiences that we've had in life. The way that the program defines selfless is put the team first. Now, by the way, John, I would like to hire to you. Could we make that definition longer? Yes, we could. And usually, I got to tell you, when we work with corporations or teams, they usually do prior to our working with them. In fact, they define their core values and it reads like a wine reading list. <laughs> it's got an earthy tone of vanilla, you know, <laughs> vanilla, and, and, and nobody knows it. No, nobody, mm -hmm. can, nobody can define it. It's kind of like this, kind of like that. Again, we control it, control it at 100%. Selfless at the program, selfless for Team Capitulic means we put the team first, period. Yeah. And I think, and that's, and and I think that's a, I, li I like the, I like the simple definition because I think in a lot of times, right, the the biggest conflicts that we have in in work and in you know in personal life too is where we perceive putting the team first is somehow putting is somehow going to be to the detriment of us personally, right? And that's going to inhibit our progress, or maybe we're not going to get the kudos or we're not going to be seen or whatever so that's that's a difficult conflict for for many people right and it would be for me too john if i worked with a bunch of selfish a bunch of selfish people and a leader who allows it it would be a problem for me too right and selflessness can be can separate the difference between success and failure on any battlefield but it only works if everybody is selfless. If somebody is selfish and the leader allows it to continue, then by simple game theory, everybody stops being selfless. Only if everybody is putting the team first is it allowed to flourish and be used to help us to our ultimate goals in life and success in life. Mm -hmm. That is why... Teammateship is very important. Teammates have got to be selfless, tough, and disciplined at the program, right. but, but selfless. But leaders have got to make sure that we recognize selflessness when it's being shown, and we have to make sure that we recognize and hold people accountable and make sure there are consequences when people are not being it. Because if you allow people who are not selfless to be on your team, stop saying your culture is one of selflessness, because it's not. Yeah, and I think that's a great point there about um, you know leaders being able to spot and acknowledge selflessness, and I think that's probably a challenge. All of us, uh, we could all challenge ourselves of being better at uh, at that for sure. And obviously, I mean, you have seen this in in probably in the most extreme conditions when you talk about being in um, you know special ops teams and that, right? Is uh, obviously in a in a team, and those are often small teams, right? So they so the fact is you have to have a hundred percent faith in those around you, right? That's right. But John, the truth is, is that the the higher the stakes, when people's if you're not selfless, some it, you will die, or somebody on your team is going to die. Guess what? 
people act selflessly. Mm-hmm. The, the real the, the real challenge for leaders is in corporate America. Yeah. If somebody's mm-hmm. if somebody's not being selfless, oh, okay. I mean, it's not you're not you're you're it might affect your livelihood, but it's not going to cause death. Yeah. So because of that, leaders end up just dealing with it. And by the way, by dealing with it, they they allow it. Dealing with yeah. it means having one conversation with somebody about their selfishness. And then if it doesn't improve, well, there's going to be consequences. And that consequence may very well be go find another team. But those yeah. are tough conversations to have. In many leaders that we work with, they just don't want to have those tough conversations. So they allow it. And by allowing it, now other people on the team start to act less selflessly because they know it does hurt them if somebody takes advantage of that. Yeah. And there and there again, you have um, in a scenario like that, then you have, um, maybe not deliberately, but you have defined your culture as one of, eh, you know, you can, you can, you can be that, or you can be selfless, but to be honest, if you're a little bit selfish, you'll probably do just fine too. <laughs> that, that's, that, how many times do we, do we work with, uh, we're privileged enough to work with so many great teams, but, but how often do we, are we talking with a client or, and they say, well, our, our, our culture is one of self, self of family. And mm. Hey, look, we've got hey boy at our, at our team outing, we have <laughs> t-shirts that say family on them. Right. Yeah. T-shirts that have family on it does not make, does not mean that you have a culture of family. It means you have t-shirts that say family. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's the standards that reinforce family that we're achieving every single day that prove that you have a culture of family or any other core value for that matter. Yeah. And, and I, by the way, I'm glad you raised that point. I love that point because I do think that it's become a little pervasive in, in, and certainly in, um, in corporate America. And, and that is where you see companies, you know, they pick a color, they get the t-shirts, they get the balloons, they post lovely pictures of everybody, you know, waving and all happy. And they say that this is, uh, you know, we have such a great culture. Maybe it's your family, whatever it is, um, their culture is. But the reality is that's as far as it goes. It's just a superficial veneer. And under the surface, it's just like every other dysfunctional organization. We get asked all the time about, Hey, do you guys have any good quotes or motivational things that that can help us? Yes, it's called talk about your core values. Right. And then again, communicate them and again and again and again. Because if we can, look, performance is important, John. Make no mistake about mm-hmm. it. You have certain sales goals, reach your sales sure. goals. Reaching goals, reaching those sales goals ensures our success in the short term. Being what our culture says we are ensures our success in every term. Right. And so just um, as we're coming up towards the end, I I just think you mentioned a number of times about, you know, uh, tough, right? So can you, uh, can you, in your words uh, and within within your program, can you define tough? Because I think tough is another word that some people struggle with. They don't really understand what it means. Well, first, John, what we believe at the program, what we write about in our book is that individuals can do well in life, but great teams compete for championships on whatever our, on, on whatever our chosen battlefield may be. And great teams are comprised of great teammates and great team leaders, families, great teammates and great team leaders. Athletic teams, great teammates and great team leaders, school classrooms, government, uh, bands, theater groups, and yes, corporations, all are teams. And the most successful teams are those that have the best teammates and the best team leaders. For us to be our best, whatever your best is based on the talent that you possess in any number, you know, the opportunities you've had in your life, whatever, just to be your best teammate and be the best teammate and best team leader that team leaders that we can be physical, mental, and emotional toughness is a prerequisite. Why? Because as the program, my teammates and I at the program know all former U S military combat veterans know is that everybody's a hero when it's 70 degrees and sunny out. Unfortunately, 
that's not when you need them. We need great teammates and great team leaders when it's not. To be the best teammate and be the best team leader that we can be when it's not, when we're faced with adversity, that's when we show our toughness, our physical, mental, and emotional toughness or resiliency. We define toughness at the program as doing what's right, not what's easy. Mm -hmm. It's always easy to do the right thing when things are going well. Sure. Everybody's a hero when things are going well. But the best teammates and the best team leaders and the best teams succeed through adversity. To, mm -hmm. to succeed through adversity, we've got to be physically, mentally, and emotionally tough. Mental tough, physical toughness. When we discuss physical toughness with teams, John, the first thing that we discuss is, let's just talk about physical fitness. A huge mm -hmm. part of physical toughness is physical fitness. We don't have to show our toughness until we've depleted our energy sources. Yeah, well, yeah. the more we exercise, the more energy we have. That's not Eric Capitulic or the program that says it. That's science that tells us. Mm -hmm. Exercise produces energy in our body through the cells in our body, through mitochondria. And I won't get into it with you, but sure. science tells us exercise produces more energy. A huge part about being physically tough is being physically fit. That's number one. Number two, mental toughness. As we discuss mental toughness, we, we create, we, we make mental mistakes one of two times, a, a hundred different times, but two main times. Number one, when we're physically tired. Number two, mm -hmm. under stress. Yep. Contrary to what every announcer you listen to on Friday, Saturday, Sunday afternoon tells you, we do not magically rise to the occasion in times <laughs> of great stress. In times of great stress, we fall back on the habits that we created right up until that moment. Right. If we want to, if first, if we make phys, if we make mental mistakes when we're physically tired, well, number one, if we want to become more mentally tough, number one, see physical toughness. Just be tired less often. Number one. Number two, if we're gonna, if we know we're gonna make mental mistakes under times of great stress, then create better, better habits on a day-to-day -day level, so that when stress hits. We don't have to somehow magically rise to it. We just fall mm -hmm. back on the habits that we created. Number three, and finally, and, and vitally important, and we don't talk about it enough, is our emotional resiliency. Mm. To be able to keep, as the British Royal Marines say, a smile in the face of adversity when things go bad, right? Two types of people in the world, energy givers and energy vampires. God, I hate energy vampires. Like, come on, an energy giver and energy vampire, the difference is a choice we make. Yeah. As we discuss at the program, we all have natural human emotions, anger, happiness, sad, frustration. Unless you're a sociopath, we all, <laughs> experience, we all experience those natural human emotions. That's normal. But we don't yell or scream because we're angry. No, we yell and scream because we choose to yell and scream when we have this natural human emotion of called anger. Mm -hmm. You can be angry. And talk in a conversational tone like we're talking right now, John. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the difference? As the program teaches, one deep breath. Right. When we feel these natural human emotions, typically in times of adversity or, or dealing with things that we're passionate about, take one deep breath, create a habit to take one deep breath. And in, during that one deep breath, think. That's the key word here, John. Think about how do I react to this natural human emotion that will ensure my team's mission accomplishment? Right. That's emotional toughness. It's a habit that we create. It's, it's very closely linked to mental toughness, but we, we separate those. If we're going to be the best teammates and best team leaders that we're going to be, physical, mental, and emotional toughness is a prerequisite. Yeah, and I think that a fantastic place to finish. And I think I'd just underline that 100% because I just think that, as I said earlier, unfortunately, we live in a culture today that uh, that sends out uh, very contra contrary messages about, uh, about things like this. So I, I think this is a really important message. So Eric, uh, before we go, if you want to tell people a little bit more about uh, what you and your organization does and how they can find out more about you. John, thanks so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on here today. One thing, John, that I would I would highlight to your listeners is this. You're right about what culture, what society 
teaches us today, the, the marketing blitzes that we mm -hmm. get and everything else. In society, we don't control that. What we do control, we control our families. We control yeah. our, our, the, the teams Absolutely. that we're on. So instead of pointing fingers and blaming society, let's just stay focused on making the best teammates and best team leaders that I can be. Number one, first, it starts with me. And then making sure that we have the best teammates and best team leaders that we can be on our team, on our families, on our athletic teams, school rooms, and in businesses, and we'll achieve the success we want to achieve in life. Yeah, and by the way, just and by the way, just to underline that is is that if you if you thought if you think about if everybody did that in their own like families or the small right. circles around them, put all that together, you've got a great world, right? That's oh man, we do. Or, or you know, at least we have John. We have a better. We have a better. Yeah, world. we have a better world. And, yeah. and and that's what and that's what we discuss at the program. It's not about cl climbing Mount Everest. It's about being whatever your best is. Mm -hmm. That's what the that's what the program is about. About teaching and developing. That's what our book teaches and, and develops in, in it. To learn more about both, uh, John, people can, uh, please, we, we suggest they go to our website, which is theprogram.org. There's more information there about the program, our services, and how you work with us, and also about our book, as well as uh, how to buy it. You can also buy it through Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, but I'll keep it simple for people. If they go to theprogram.org, they can learn more about both our corporation and the book listen eric this has been fantastic thank you for sharing it with, uh, with us this morning uh, it's eric uh, kapitulik uh, the book is the program the the program is the program too so the program.org uh my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm see you all for another expert interview really soon and thanks again eric for joining us. thank you thank you john